Hello everybody, this is Deidre with Paper Crafts and Planners and I thought I'd show you what I've been working on. And I am swatching my different color coloring mediums. I have had a system where I, I've never had anything for my watercolors or my alcohol markers other than the little card that came with them that you just swatched the single color. But I had a system for my dye inks and my, all my different inks really. But it was a binder with the little um, coin pockets in it and I cut little two by two squares, did a solid color stamp, stuck it in that binder. The problem is when I open up the binder then I have to pull each little card out to really get a look at the color. And I didn't do any second generation stamping or much blending, that kind of thing. So I saw this stamp set the other day from Waffle Flower and I keep wanting to say Waffle House and that probably means I have a problem, right? <laughs> With food. <laughs> Anyway, these are from Waffle Flower. There are two pieces to the set. I actually think there was a bigger set that came with more pieces, but I barely need these. So, um, but anyway, they have different configurations of these stamps. They have some information about tone and saturation and all that that you can document. They have a stamp for the manufacturer, the brand, the series, whether it's pigment ink, dye ink, the kind of paper you used, all of that. So if you really want to to have some swatches that give you a really good idea of how your different mediums react to different paper and that kind of thing, this is the stamp set for you. And then it came with this second one that these are the solid pieces that can be stamped in all of the different shapes. Okay, to start off with, first of all, I think this would be wonderful if you had um, like a set of pink dye inks and you wanted to do a card with all your dye inks next to each other or all of your Distress Oxides next to each other without blending them just to see what the colors are alone and then maybe taking a square to blend. So there's just a whole bunch of different things you can do with this. This is one full stamp, this is one full stamp, this is one full, so, and this is one full stamp. What I did was took this one here, I cut the top row off and then I cut one section off. And I'll show you how I'm using it to start off with for my inks. So let's put this aside, let me show you what I've done. So I took my scrap white pieces for the alcohol markers and also for the inks. And then I'm using something else for my watercolor and I'll show you that in a minute. But anyway, I cut these to one and a half by three and a quarter. And then I have a punch. This one's by Dress My Craft. And it will cut one and a half to two and a half. So different widths. And then the length is up to you. And so I just wanted them to be uniform. So that's why I cut them three and a quarter by one and a half. And then I went through and I punched them all. And I took and stamped this one piece, like I told you that I cut off on here for the inks, I just did it one time. And then I took this one that will go in each of these one third sections that fits perfectly from the solid stamp set. I used my intense black from close to my heart because it can be used with alcohol markers and watercolor, so I really love that. If you do not have that one, I will link to it in case you want it, but Stazon will work for the watercolor and Memento will work for the alcohol inks. So Stazon is like a solvent ink. So this one with the watercolor, I usually let it set for just a little bit. So as I was stamping for the watercolor, I stamped the first one. And then by the time I got to the last one, of course, it's more than ready to go. Okay, so I've got this ink from Close to My Heart. This is Wild Berry, and it's there. It's a dye ink, and it's the color of the year, so. And I love pink. <laughs> I'm gonna get it as saturated as I can, and then I'm going to go in this first one, probably not really well, because I'm not gonna put my head over it. I'm gonna do full saturation in the first square, and then I'm gonna stamp again at the rectangles, in the second rectangle, and then stamp again in the third. So I can see what second generation and third generation stamping looks like with this color. And then I'm going to go and take a piece of scratch paper. You could take washi, whatever, and I'm gonna block off part of that. And then I'm gonna take, this is also a waffle flower. I love that the handles have the color. So I have one for my pinks, one for my oranges, one for my reds, that kind of thing. Um, and I'm going to just blend on the bottom here. Maybe I want to be darker in one quarter and blend out, whatever you want to do. But I want to see what the blended color looks like, which of course it's never going to be as dark as the first generation, really saturated. But I like seeing what the color will be. 
and then I'm going to take my little micron. Now I could do some of the stamping because clearly there's one that says manufacturer and all that, but I'm just going to write CTMH for close to my heart. And then I'm going to write the color, which is wild berry. And again, I could stamp it from that stamp set, but I'm just going to write dye down here. Most all of my close to my heart are dye inks. I have a few of the pigments. And I'm going to clean this up. This is a stamp sham, or not a stamp chamois. It is for cars. It's a chamois and um, it comes in a roll dry. It looks like this. This is what I have left of a big roll of it. It's fairly inexpensive. You can get it at the automotive department at Walmart. I just cut off a section. I wet it down and then squeeze it out really good. And I keep it in this little made it by Marco um, container on my desk when I'm stamping. So I do have to wet it every time, but you know, that's okay. I think you have to do it with all the stamp chamois. And then just a microfiber cloth to make sure I get the rest of the pink off there. Because in case I use a lighter pink the next time than this one, I don't want it to, the color to come off too differently. Oh, and this, I'm gonna wipe this down. So then I just am gonna put it on the ring. I have put all of my dye inks together. Look how pretty that is. It's just so pretty. Anyway, have all of my dye inks together. They're not all close to my heart. I have some Altenu and um, that might be it. Oh, I have some Memento too in a, in a different color. I think I have a gray. These are some of my old Fun Stampers Journey ones along with, they're a fusion ink. So any other fusion inks, I think I have some Catherine Pooler inks. Yes, so that's scrapbook.com. And I also have Catherine Pooler inks and they are fusion inks also. And then I put my couple of pigment inks on here, which mostly for pigment ink I use clear, but um, I have do have a couple that are colored. And then I have my distress oxides are on a separate. And I don't have a lot of distress oxides. It can be a little addicting collecting these, right? Because they're just so pretty. And I just swatch these along the bottom. Or actually I think I used foam one of those dome-shaped foam blenders on these. And um, I kept them separate because I don't mix them together when I'm doing a project I'm not going to use. Unless I'm inking the edges, I might use my vintage photo, but otherwise I'm gonna keep them separate. Okay, so that is how I did all of my inks and they're all done, it's so exciting. I put them on these little rings and right now I'm just setting them on top of where I store, on top of my ink pad storage. Okay, so this, by the way, this little piece came with, I have some Ohuhu um, alcohol markers. And actually, I didn't grab any. Let me grab a couple of those. Um, and it came, I think I have a set of 48. They're very inexpensive. And it came with this mat, too. And then a little thing to swatch them. So, but no, nothing to show you how they blend together. So that's my problem. That's what I needed to find out. Okay, on this next one, let's do an alcohol marker. Um, I have Tri-Blend Spectrum Noirs, and I have, um, let's see, and I have the Ohuhu. So I've been playing around with the Ohuhu, and this is going to be something, don't you love saying that name, Ohuhu? Anyway, this is going to be something that I play with maybe as I'm watching TV or something because I'm really struggling to get a good blend with these and to find the colors that go together. You would think the color families that are right next to each other would look good together, and for the most part, that's true. So Y3 and Y2, and then I blended them. That doesn't look too bad. Um, but then I had to, I was like, what can I pull for a lighter shade? And I tried that Y30 with the Y3 and Y2. Uh, it's okay. Anyway, like I said, I really need to play with these. I'm going to use a tri-blend here, though, to show you how these work, how this works, and um, because it's a no-brainer with these, but it is kind of nice to see them on the card. So we're going to take and put, and for this first one, I'm just going to quickly fill this in. So this is just the lightest color and the mid-tone color. And these are the pins that Close to My Heart carries, and I'd never tried them before, but as a maker with them, I thought, well, let me try them. Oh, I love them so much. I end up pulling them mostly because I don't know which colors blend well with the other markers. And I don't know Copics mostly because I'm just, I'm never going to be the person that is an expert at this. And the price point for Copics is just more than I want to pay. Okay, so let's try a couple different ways of blending. This one, we're going to just put the lightest. And I'm just going to do little circles here. I know some people do little bitty lines. Some people do little dots, all different ways. And then I'm going to put the darkest over here. 
and this one it just all the shades are so pretty and nice and light so it's not hard to blend this one at all and then we have um, the mid-tone and I will kind of start on the dark bring it into the middle and then go into that lightest with my little circles and again you can kind of see how this goes and you can come back with your lightest or your darkest and keep blending until you really like the way that looks okay and then on the bottom one I'm going to try something a little bit different this is the nice thing about this I think so you can play around and you can write little notes on here about what you did so let's do the um, light color all over and then let's take the dark on the one side and come over a bit and then take that medium again so this one I kind of saturated the whole thing with the light first before I started blending and there you go just I mean it's a slightly different look but to play around with it it's a lot of fun and so what I'm going to do is do maybe up here put spectrum noir and in the middle put tri blend and then I could put this is the light pink I think it's called pale pink pale pink and then I could do some more notes down here about how I blended in the middle, how I blended at the bottom, any notes you want to take. And then that way, when you're ready to flip through and see what you want to use, you've got an idea. This one, it is a different look when I put the pale all the way over and then put the other colors on top. And I kind of like it better. Anyway, okay, so there's that. Now we have this watercolor. Um, this is Bristol Smooth watercolor paper and I've had a big tablet of it, have not used it. I think my grandchildren have, so um, <laughs> I feel bad that I haven't used it. But anyway, we're gonna use it today. So I pulled out two of my Tombow markers in green colors, and we're going to play around with this a little bit. I've swatched three times, so we can kind of play around with some different looks. So the way I usually do this is I get a lot of it on my matte or slick surface and then I pick it up with a water pen and you just want to make sure your water pen is not too wet that's always been my problem is getting my water pen really wet and we're gonna start and just do um, get a lot of the color here and then we're going to just pull it all the way over and see what it looks like when you get the lightest so here pull a little bit more over and again, this is not something I'm an expert at, but I really have fun doing it. I think that's the important thing, right? That you're having a good time. And then we're going to do the darker green underneath on that second one. Get my pen, make sure it's not too wet. And we'll start here with the darkest. And then we're just gonna pull that color across until I get a nice light over here, really pale. And then I think what I'm going to do is take the lightest in one corner and the darkest in the other. Again, these are my swatches, so I'm gonna play around with them as much as I want to. If there's something I wanna try out, this is a great way to do it. And we'll start over here put that light and then we'll bring this dark from this side maybe you want to shade some leaves and you want to see what these two colors look like together and I'm getting a lot on here so I'm going to tap off a little bit of that and then I'm going to come back in with this lightest and bring it over And I've probably been a little heavy-handed with this but anyway for this paper it's getting too saturated but anyway so I could play around with this and see what my colors are going to look like together and then again take my pen and come in and write some notes so I know what I did Tombow they don't have colors on them at least the ones I have do not but they do have a number this one's 249 
and this one is uh, 158 and so I could make note of that so I know what went together on this little swatch so I'm excited I have colored pencils some that I mix with water some that I mix with um, with Gamsol or for me baby oil because I'm too cheap to buy the Gamsol anyway and then I can come in and play with those and swatch those and know what those will look like if I use them differently and for somebody who's not an expert at coloring and just wants to play around and maybe get a little bit better at it, I think this stamp set is really going to be so much fun for me. I'll link to everything below that I used, and I hope you enjoyed seeing how I'm swatching things now. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Happy crafting!